For the new SNP leader and First Minister, there's been no political honeymoon. Hamza Youssef is wrestling with a nightmare in box, from searing internal tensions over the way ahead for his Scottish government to all the fallout from the continuing police probe into the party's finances. Today, he revealed the firm that audits SNP accounts resigned about six months ago, something he says he didn't know before becoming leader. Well, we invited Mr Youssef on tonight's programme. He declined and the SNP couldn't provide us with any of their parliamentarians. But we did speak to Professor James Mitchell. He's an expert in the history of the SNP and is chair in public policy at Edinburgh University. Professor Mitchell, Hamza Youssef is just a fortnight into his new job. Could things have gone any worse for him? Well, it's difficult to imagine uh, the situation being worse. And I think the way to really appreciate that is to contrast his inheritance as leader of the SNP with Nicola Sturgeon's eight years ago. I mean, eight years ago, the SNP was riding high. Its membership was soaring. It had come through a referendum, which has seen independent support grow from around 30 percent to 45 percent. It was in the verge of coming close to taking every single one of the Scottish seats in the House of Commons. And the party was in very good mood and it had good relations with the wider, wider yes movement, supports for independence. His inheritance is completely different. The SNP today is in trauma. Members are fearful of the next revelation. It's deeply divided. Uh, the membership has hemorrhaged. Uh, and obviously there are problems with the finances of the party. And its reputation, I think, for good governance is now, uh, at the very least, challenged in a way that it certainly wasn't eight years ago. So it's a very, very difficult situation that he has inherited. Um, and it's difficult to see how he can find a way out of this. As a historian of the SNP, has there ever been anything that rivals this? I think you've really got to go way back to the very early days of the SNP. And in a sense, it wasn't the same political party in many respects to find anything quite like this. The nearest modern equivalent was the, was the period after 1979 when the SNP had lost nine of its 11 MPs. And the party then went into a, a very divisive internal uh, battle on, on, on its future. But it was nothing like this. This is the SNP facing a very different kind of trauma. Uh, there was certainly no suggestions of, of, of problems as, that the SNP is currently facing back then. It was very much a political problem uh, on issues and on strategy. This is very much a, a series of problems that have been self-imposed by the leadership, the former leadership of the party uh, on the party today. So there really isn't anything quite like this in the SNP's history. Well, the party is divided on a range of issues, but gender reform is certainly a key one. We expect, uh, we're told today, to hear within days uh, that Hamza Youssef will push ahead with a legal uh, challenge to the UK government's uh, Section 35 order, the block on gender reform laws. Why do you think he can um, succeed in terms of doing that or push ahead with that when it ran Nicola Sturgeon into so many issues? clearly doesn't command much public support and it's something that deeply divides his party. Um, the only possible explanation is that the Greens, um, with whom the, the SNP has a, an agreement, uh, are pressing very hard for this. But it's still very odd. Um, the Greens are, are not just a smaller party, they're a tiny party. Um, and, and in a sense, I think the SNP does appear to be very much under the control of the Greens on this issue. Um, it's far from certain that they can come close to winning in any battle with London, certainly not politically, given that public opinion uh, does not side with the SNP. What the SNP has done in this is actually hand the Conservatives uh, a gift on this issue. So it's, it's, it's a very strange decision to go ahead with this challenge. Do you think Hamza Youssef has a long term future? What, you know, what could he do? What's something he could do to try and turn things around? Certainly on the basis of what he's done in the very short period he's had as leader, it doesn't look as if he's going to be there for 10 years or eight years or whatever. I, I suspect he's likely to be an interim leader. The SNP is facing a, a, a mounting series of challenges, but most notably politically, um, with the next UK election coming up, the SNP is going to be very much on the defensive. It's not going to come close to winning 50% of the vote that Nicola Sturgeon was talking about back in, in June of last year. It's going to lose seats. The question 
question is how many seats and that will simply encourage more people to challenge him to suggest he's out of his depth that he's not competent and so I, I think he's he's in a very very difficult position so I, at the moment I, I would expect that he won't last very long as leader of the SNP he doesn't have the authority in the party as well that's a very important point but I must remember that his own personal base in the SNP is is very limited he he came to leadership really because he had the endorsement the support of the of the party establishment of the former leader now that is no longer quite the the positive thing that it was perhaps allowing him to win um, so I think he's he's got an, another set of problems with with regard to his own personal standing within the party mm. and given that you know is there anything you think he could do successfully now to try and unite the party I think it would take a very uh, capable leader, a very po powerful leader to be able to make the changes that are required. And frankly, I think it's very difficult while the SNP is in office. There are so many problems that the SNP as a party has, leaving aside the questions of competence in government, and that to deal with these problems will require a much more openness and we'll have to face up to some very harsh realities, some very difficult things will have to come to light. And, and I think that is much easier done when you're in opposition. Um, and I, I, and I I think that that's really probably beyond Holmes or Yusuf, if I'm, if I'm being perfectly honest. Professor James Mitchell, thank you so much for speaking to us on Scotland Tonight. Thank you.